1923, the Hollywood Land sign was erected, now simply known as the Hollywood sign. This happens to be the same year the hero of our story was born. The Hollywood sign has long been a symbol for aspiring actors that had dreams of becoming a star from nothing. In this episode, I'm going to tell you a similar story about a man who lived a true life rags to riches story to become an owner of an NFL franchise, and it all revolved around apartment buildings. Welcome to the Football History Dude Podcast, where each episode is a journey back in time to learn about the rich history of the NFL. Your host is Arnie Chapman. Football is his passion, and he wants you to Come along with him to explore the yesteryear of the gridiron. So hop on board his DeLorean, and let's get this baby up to 88 miles per hour. This time as we step off our DeLorean, the date is September 28th, 1923, and we are in Stockton, California. This time the hero of our story is Alexander Gus Spanos, who was a true life rags to riches as, no, a true life rags to billionaire story and it was a man that truly lived the american dream proving that you can go from nothing to become a billionaire and on along the way you can own an nfl franchise which is happens to be the dream of your host i want to own the detroit lions someday so miss martha ford i'm ready to hand them over to me anytime you are but let's get into the life and career of alex spanos This was the official statement that was released from the office of Commissioner Roger Goodell through the NFL Communications channel pretty much right after his passing. And it goes as such. Alex Spanos is an American success story, driven by a tireless work ethic inspired by his humble beginnings as the son of a Greek immigrant. Alex became one of the country's most successful businessmen, but he never forgot his roots and the call to help others. Along with Faye, his beloved wife of nearly 70 years, Alex's philanthropic and civic contributions touched many lives throughout California and around the country. He was a marvelous friend and partner whose impact on the NFL will never be forgotten. We all benefited from Alex's compassion, character, and zest for football and life. On behalf of the entire NFL family, we extend our deepest condolences to Dean, the entire Spanos family, and the Chargers organization. So stepping it back, like we said, we took the DeLorean back to September 28, 1923, which was the birth time in Stockton, California, of our hero. And he was born to Greek immigrants, Constantino and Evanthia. Alex was one of six children, and according to his memoir, his father came to America from Greece in 1912 to work in a restaurant started by his cousin. So a little side story that I found, the original name on his birth certificate was Leonidas. But uh, he was named Alexander at the christening because his godfather was a fan of Alexander the Great. And as a young boy, he worked all throughout his life. In fact, at the uh, ripe old age of eight, he started working in his father's bakery. And uh, maybe it was even earlier than that. Who really knows? But there was a video that told of a story where he would work hours before school at the bakery. Then he'd go to school, and then after school, he'd come home, and he'd work in the bakery again. And, you know, that instilled the incredible work ethic at an early age, which would help him become one of the most successful businessmen in America. That wasn't the way that it started. You see, there was an article where it it stated that he actually dropped out of California Polytech School to join the Air Force, you know, training to become a pilot. But that didn't work out. So he served later in World War II as a B-29 tail gunner. Then after the war, he decided to return back to Stockton, where he attended the University of Pacific. But he dropped out again. He went back to his father's bakery. So this whole time, his father's thinking that he's just a dropout, nobody, never going to go anywhere. And then he, he married his wife in 1948. And like we said in Roger Goodell's statement, his wife's name was Faye. And they raised four children together. Then in 1951, He was still working for his father. And he's all like, you know what, man? I deserve more. I want a raise. His father's like, no way. You're not getting a raise. So you know what he did? He decided to sit down on his own. His father's like, good riddance, you know, because you're just a dropout. Nobody has been, whatever kind of stuff. And he took that as an opportunity to start from nowhere to try to get his business on track. And a quote from a recent article in the Wall Street Journal kind of summed it up as this. When Alex Spanos walked out of his job at the family bakery, his father predicted he would soon come crawling back. 
The need to prove his domineering Greek immigrant father wrong was all the motivation the son would ever need. At age 27, he founded a company to feed and house migrant farm workers. Later, he became one of the largest developers of apartment buildings in the U.S. He trained himself to be a top-rated amateur golfer, played the game regularly with Bob Hope, and developed a song and dance routine with the comedian to perform at charity events. End quote. And speaking of the large apartment complex building company that he had, that was in 1960. He founded A.G. Spanos Companies, a construction company that ended up becoming one of the largest family-owned builders of multifamily housing and developers of master plan communities in the nation. In a 2002 autobiography of Alex Spanos' life titled Sharing the Wealth, My Story, comes from his company's website, and it kind of stated it as such. It is a moving and powerful recollection of his humble beginnings, his road to success, and advice on how to achieve one's dreams. Now, I put an Amazon link to this book in the show notes. And uh, by the way, you can get to the show notes by heading to thefootballhistorydude.com. Also, you can subscribe for free to this show by mashing that little subscribe button on your podcast player of choice. That way, you'll get the freshest, hottest off the press episodes each and every week. But now, let's go a little bit further into his career. And let's talk about his time with the San Diego Chargers. So he purchased a 60% share of the San Diego Chargers in August of 1984 from the majority owner at the time, whom was Eugene Klein, for $70 million. Now, it was his lifelong dream to own an NFL franchise. Just like you said, you know, the host of your show, that's my lifelong dream too. So maybe one day I'll get there. I don't know. Watch out, Ford family. I'm on my way. Um, Those of you out there want to, Help me out a little bit. Let's talk. But over decades, he would end up buying out shareholders to own 97% of the team. Um, There's been some up and downs that he had, but he was responsible for hiring Bobby Beathard and Bobby Ross. He put the faith in them to bring San Diego their only Super Bowl berth. And Bobby Beathard, yes, we talked about that individual. He was a member of this year's Hall of Fame class. And there's a one reason is because he took the San Diego Chargers to their only Super Bowl. He built that franchise. And uh, it was said by Bobby Beathard that Spanos was tough but fair. And he almost walked out on him a few times because he's kind of a fiery dude. You know, although he was a huge success in business, he realized quickly running an NFL franchise is not the same as running a construction business. Although there are some similarities. I mean, you got to have management skills, strategy, forethought, vision, planning, and that kind of thing, plus the delegation to those around you and work as a team to be able to rise up and, you know, win some kind of championship. In this case, it's the goal of a Super Bowl. But uh, he did, like I said, realize that it wasn't quite the same thing. And that there was actually a quote that came from Alex that kind of described how he thought about running the team. And it goes as such. The most significant difference of owning a team and trying to run a team as opposed to business itself is you have to rely on others to make it happen for you. I always set five-year goals, and I set a five-year goal to go to the Super Bowl, never realizing I had to rely on others to make it happen for me. End quote. So he ran the organization for 10 years, and he had a 68 win and 91 loss record. Then he handed over the reins to his son, Dean, before the 1994 season which happened to be the year that they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers to advance to their first and only berth to the Super Bowl. But even though Alex didn't actually directly run the team during this year, he set the foundation, like I said. He hired, he he had that forethought when he realized, hey, I gotta kind of rely on some other guys here. He hired Bobby Beathard to kind of be the visionary general manager to bring in the right personnel, and he hired Bobby Ross as a coach. So it's kind of like, you know, Bobby Beathard helped create the vision, and then he helped create the battle plan. Bobby Ross helped execute that battle plan. So, kind of bringing it back a little bit too, his contribution to the team was great. You know, he he helped, like I said, took San Diego to their only Super Bowl birth of all time. Um, But what he did off the field, that's really what he was known more for. I mean, for the city, for his family, for the community, everything. Something that was brought up was for the city, he spearheaded the charge to bring the Super Bowl to the city of San Diego. It was held there three different times during his uh, tenure. That was Super Bowl 22, 32, and 37, which was 1988, 1998, and 2003. Many of you remember Super Bowl 32 
as one of the more memorable Super Bowls out there and, and one of the most iconic plays in a Super Bowl that occurred. If I tell you the Super Bowl between the Green Bay Packers and the Denver Broncos, you know, Brett Favre v. John Elway, this was John Elway's first Super Bowl victory. Do you remember that play? You know, the famous helicopter touchdown. Yeah, that happened in San Diego during Super Bowl 32. But some other things that he did for the city of San Diego was he was a huge philanthropist. And he also helped out back in his hometown, which is Stockton, California. He implemented many Chargers community outreach programs that still exist today. And this quote comes from the Chargers website describing the contributions that he helped make to the city of San Diego. And it goes as such. The Chargers Community Foundation, which he created and funded, still supports numerous critical causes, individuals in need, and organizations supporting the community. Hospitals, universities, scholarship funds, youth programs, sports programs, churches, schools, all were recipients of their incredible generosity. Now, they were actually speaking of the entire family, that is. And speaking of the family, now, this was the greatest joy and pride of Alex Bandos. He had a wife, Faye. They had four children. They had 15 grandchildren and 12 great-grandchildren. And it was said that his family always came first. And then, of course, he unfortunately passed away on October 9th of 2018. But with that being said, Charlie Casterly described him in a uh, recent interview as Mr. Excitement. Reminiscing of how his deep passion for the team, game, his entire community, just every conversation that he had with him was deep rooted with energy, passion, and excitement. And by the way, you can experience your own excitement on DraftKings today by earning a free entry into a tournament if you head to thefootballhistorydude.com slash DraftKings. Again, head to thefootballhistorydude.com slash DraftKings for your free entry into a tournament on DraftKings. But to sum it all up, this is the official statement that came from the desk of Paul Tagliabue, the former commissioner of the NFL. During the time, a lot of it was when Alex Spanos and him were involved. And it goes as such. I was blessed to have Alex Spanos as a leading NFL owner and strong supporter during my 17 years as an NFL commissioner. Alex was widely respected for his stellar personal values, his unique business accomplishments, and his trademark blunt advice. He kept a consistent focus on the best interests of the NFL, not just the interests of his beloved football team. Many of my cherished memories are sitting with Alex at Chargers games, at Hellenic or Greek Orthodox festivities, and at special family occasions in Stockton with beautiful Faye and their exceptional family. Alex was an irreplaceable voice during his active NFL years, urging all of us to remain grounded with the right priorities. His extraordinary legacy will continue through Dean and the entire Spanos family. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Football History Dude and were able to gain some knowledge nuggets about one of the great contributors to San Diego organization and the community. In the upcoming episode, we explore the life and career of another NFL owner that passed away recently, Paul Allen. But for now, dudes, I'm through if you're through. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Football History Dude. Make sure you're the first to get the next episode. Please subscribe with your podcast player of choice and head on over to thefootballhistorydude.com for the show notes and more information on the history of the NFL. And remember, dudes, where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs>